Well, after attending a three back-to-back -back emergency summit in Brussels, Belgium, U.S. President Joe Biden has landed in Poland to get a first-hand look at efforts to keep refugees fleeing the war-torn country. Biden has arrived in uh, Zezong, <clears throat> which is hardly 160 kilometers away from the Ukraine border. After landing, U.S. President met with soldiers from the U.S.'s 82nd Airborne Division of the Army. U.S. soldiers have been stationed there as part of NATO's protection of the alliance's eastern flank. While addressing the soldiers, Biden said, and I quote, you are in the midst of a fight between democracies and oligarchs. Meanwhile, as the Russian-Ukraine war enters day 31, Moscow continues to bomb key Ukrainian cities, including the capital city of Kyiv and Kharkiv. I spent a lot of time in Ukraine when I was a senator and vice president. I've spoken to the Rada in the days when they, in fact, uh, didn't have what you'd call a democracy and was there in the Madan when the former leader had to take off and head up into Russia. And uh, so, you know, with the Ukrainian people, Ukrainian people have a lot of backbone. They have a lot of guts. And I'm sure you're observing it. The world ain't going to be the same, not because of Ukraine, but I'm not going to be the same. 10, 15 years from now in terms of our organizational structures. And the question is, who's going to prevail? Are democracies going to prevail and the, and the values we share? Or autocracy is going to prevail? And that's really what's at stake. So what you're doing is consequential, really consequential. We're in the midst of, and I don't want to sound too philosophic here, but you're in the midst of a fight between democracies and... and, and as Ukraine continues to stand tall and strong in spite of being bloodied and battered, Russian President Vladimir Putin has switched to a new plan. Russia now vows to liberate Donbass as its military defense has said first phase of Ukraine operation was successful. This comes days after Russia had set up a no-fly zone over Ukraine's Donbass. Russians even claim atrocities by Ukrainian government and the forces in the region. Earlier this month, Putin had even said it had been a difficult decision to invade Ukraine. Donbass is crucial as Russia-backed separatists now control 93% of Ukraine's Luhansk region and 54% of Donetsk, the two areas that make up Donbass. You know what I'm going to say? Maybe it's a bit harsh, but it's going to come to my head. But in any case, the situation makes me say such things. You can see, when we are in one or in another region, Значит, бродящие собаки набрасываются на, на людей, ранят, даже есть и летальные случаи. А потом, это отдельная проблема, и местные власти должны этим заниматься. А потом мы видим, когда начинают травить этих животных, убивать их, расстреливать. Послушайте, но люди не Дон, на Донбассе, это не бродящие собаки. От 13 до 14 тысяч человек убили за это время. On board a train from Moscow to the border town of Rostov, snow over here melting in the in the in the regions outside of Moscow. Uh, it is cold, but it is not very cold. Uh, this is the, the the trains over here very comfortable walk, uh, but. What we are going to show you is not just life in cities, but also life in the border towns. They look very different if you see, uh, not the kind of structure, the high-rise buildings that you see in Moscow, uh, the, the, the flora, fauna, and the structure of the entire town is going to look very different when we reach uh, the border towns, although, yes, uh, very European in their way of life, in the way they uh, live. Uh, we will show you that, but uh, again, there are reports of supply shortages in border towns. Let's go there and see whether that's the case or not. And also, tensions. Uh, tensions are high in the border towns between U uh, of Ukraine and Russia. On the Russian side, there are a lot of people who have families across the border. Uh, also, uh, Ukrainians, uh, on, the, on the Ukraine side, there are a lot of Russians or people of Russian origin. Many even hold Russian passports. They have families across uh, on this side. So we will speak to them and ask them how they feel about this entire conflict that's ongoing. It has taken a toll not just on the lives of people in Ukraine but also on how Russia and Ukraine are going to look at each other, the familial ties, 
the historical uh, ties between each other and the relationship that people have, the people to people connect. So we'll talk all about that, but for now, it's a long journey uh, to Rostov, which is a border town, and from there to really the border between Russia and Ukraine, which is the Donbass region of uh, Ukraine. So we'll report from there as well. With the journalist Satya Rautre on board a train from Moscow to Rostov, Kita Mohan for India Today. Well, hours after President Putin put his nuclear forces on the state of alert, several Russian submarines capable of carrying 16 ballistic missiles sailed into the North Atlantic. Tracked by Western militaries, the decision to send the submarines closer to European shores was seen by the British Navy chiefs as posturing and a warning rather than an actual threat. They returned towards Russia shortly after and normal levels of activity resumed. Since then, Western intelligence agencies have kept a closer eye on Kremlin's nuclear arsenal, while Russia's use of strategic nuclear weapons of the sort carried by the submarines is still being viewed by most observers as unthinkable. Some analysts envisage a scenario in which shorter range, lower yield tactical nuclear. This is not the first time that Putin has hinted at using nuclear power. After the Russian troops invaded Ukraine, Putin on the 28th of February had said that Russia's nuclear forces are on high alert. Russian troops had also attacked premises of Zephorizia and also attempts are made to capture Chernobyl power plant. As Russians continue to bear the consequences of sanctions imposed by Western nations, President Vladimir Putin has accused the West of trying to cancel the Russian culture, referring to the cancellation of events involving Russian artists in some Western countries in recent weeks. 31 days of war. Devastation across Ukraine. Putin unrelenting, unwilling to stop the carnage. Now, the Russian president is playing the victim. After starting a war that has seen the world turn against him, Putin is accusing the West of dirty tactics, of trying to wipe out Russian culture. Putin compared the move against a number of Russian cultural events in recent weeks with the actions of Nazi Germany in the 1930s. A number of events involving Russian cultural figures who have voiced support for the war have been cancelled. Books of Russian writers are being banned as well. The infamous culture of cancellations has turned into cancellation of culture. Tchaikovsky, Shostakovich, Rachmaninov are being removed from concert programs. Russian writers and their books are being banned as well. Last time, such massive company of destruction of unsuitable literature was conducted almost 90 years ago by the Nazis in Germany. We know and remember very well the footage from film archives of books being burned. Putin compared the situation of Russian writers to Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling after she sparked controversy with opinions on transgender issues. Joanne Rowling, whose books were sold in hundreds of millions around the world, was cancelled because she displeased advocates of so-called gender freedoms. Today, they are trying to cancel whole country with a thousand year history. Our people, I'm talking about ongoing discrimination of everything to do with Russia. Since Putin sent Russian troops into Ukraine, Western nations have piled several sanctions on Moscow to force Russia to end the war. The maintenance of sanctions, the increasing the pain, and the demonstration why I asked for this NATO meeting today is to be sure that after a month we will sustain what we're doing, not just next month, the following month, but for the remainder of this entire year. That's what will stop him. The sanctions have left Russia isolated, politically and financially. Sadly, Russian sports and culture have become part of the collateral damage. Bureau Report, India Today. A massive explosion led to fire and smoke in an oil depot in Saudi Arabia's Jeddah and other facilities in Riyadh. The kingdom reported rocket and drone strikes targeting an oil depot in Jeddah and other facilities 
Yemen's Saudi rebels have acknowledged a series of attacks on Saudi Arabia. Coalition said oil giant Aramco's petroleum products distribution station in Jeddah was hit, causing a fire in two storage tanks. No casualties have been reported. A huge plume of black smoke could be seen rising over the Red Sea, where the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix is taking place this weekend. Drivers and teams later decided to go ahead with the race.